the level of frustration and feelings that come about from dealing with circular arguments lead many, many people into reactivity and into what people call reactive abuse. Okay, so there's a reason for it. Circular arguments are frustrating. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from toxic relationships in your life. If you need help with anything related to toxic relationships or dealing with the ones you've had in your life or healing from them, better yet, check out the information for coaching or group coaching in the main description of every video. The endless argument that goes round and round and round in circles and never ever has resolution. Have you experienced the circular argument with a narcissistic person? You know, I speak to a lot of people with coaching and one main thing, especially when people are trying to leave a narcissistic person or aren't going to leave a narcissistic person or have to deal with one at work or whatever, is the reactivity that they feel when dealing with narcissistic people, especially when things get heated and when arguments start. Now, here's the thing. A narcissist needs that constant stirring up of your emotions. They need you off kilter. They need to set the narrative that you're off, you're crazy, because inside they aren't exactly stable. They aren't exactly secure, okay? They need you insecure. They need you to be arguing. They need you to be reactive. The circular argument will take them there. They also need to deflect all blame away from themselves, especially if you're dealing with covert narcissists. And they do not want to take any accountability, as we know, based on some of the diagnostics for even being narcissistic, right? So they don't want that accountability. The way to completely get rid of accountability is to twist a conversation into a circular argument. The shortest definition I have of a circular argument is a conversation that runs in loops. A conversation that becomes an argument because it runs in loops. An avoiding of a topic to run things around in circles so that you don't have to talk about the topic that was brought up. And then the major point of a circular argument is it never reaches resolution. You will never feel resolved and you will never feel like there any real communication has been had with someone who is using circular argument as a manipulation tactic. Remember that this is a manipulative control tactic meant to throw you off, meant to deflect, meant to confuse. It's meant to shut down all communication and derail your thoughts. So why do we get reactive? Often we get reactive because we feel the gaslighting that happens. We feel something going on that isn't right. And here's one example of circular argument. It's illogical reasoning or fabricated logic. So they will change the topic or find like a tangential or like side topic that relates to what you're talking about and then start throwing illogical statements at it. They act as if there's logic behind them. So what's happening is they're using an assumption about a situation, could be any assumption, to support this false logic that they're trying to create, this false narrative. And then they draw conclusions from that assumption to align the thoughts to create a completely different delusional reality. Sometimes they'll use absolute statements to do this. You always, you're always this. See, here you are again. You're doing this again. You're doing that again. Basically anything to create reaction. You might notice that you are having arguments about the same thing over and over again. Let's just say they didn't do the dishes. Really simple thing. They refuse to do the dishes when that's their job to do in the house is the dishes and that's their only job to do in the house. Okay. So they're not doing the one thing that you asked them to do and that you agreed upon as their job in the home. Well, instead of saying, you're right, I'm not doing the dishes or I don't want to do the dishes, they say, oh, as if you do everything you're supposed to do. And they will deflect and put it back on you. Or they'll say something like, why are you always trying to find fault with me? I haven't done dishes yet, but I was going to do them later. You don't ever give me a chance to do the dishes. And then they'll lead the conversation at this point into something else. Do you see how you're always attacking me? How, why do you think I don't do dishes? Why do you think I can't get anything done? I'm frustrated. I'm this, I'm that, because you're always attacking me. 
And as they start twisting things, pointing the finger at you, then you start getting reactive. You're going to go into reaction based on what they're telling you. Instead of staying on topic with, well, yeah, I still need the dishes done. How are they going to get done? That is your only job around here. I'm doing everything else, right? They will continue to take that circular argument until you get reactive. Once you get reactive, they can argue with you about how you're acting. And then once you have that going on, the whole point of whether the dishes were done or not is gone. And the entire conversation becomes about how you are a terrible person for attacking them and that you are always on their case and you're always nagging about the dishes and you nag about everything and you complain about this and you complain about that and you're negative and no wonder it's difficult to get along with you. You're either so shut down at this point or you're angry, right? Like there's not a lot of room for healthy interaction right there. You go into reactivity. Going into reactivity is exactly what they want because then guess what? Not only do they not have to do the dishes, but they have just fed off of you and stolen supply. They've just taken your energy. They've just taken your good. They've just flipped you from a reasonable sane person into someone who is reactive about some dishes in the sink, right? making you look and feel crazy, making you feel more and more frustrated and feeling completely unheard. There is no point in arguing when someone starts circular argument. Once any circular argument begins, we have to learn to disengage. We have to learn to step away from it and recognize that that person, especially in this point in time, needs to be right. That person needs to control the narrative. If you're arguing with someone who needs to control the narrative, the only option is for you to have a need to control the narrative, right? There's no discussion. It ends all healthy communication. And now you are engaging in something that is very unhealthy for you and very toxic for you. So we have to learn to step away from these situations. If you cannot get away from a narcissist, choose not to leave a narcissistic person or are with someone who does circular argument because of whatever other reason they have in their life, then engaging in it is not gonna get you anywhere. We need to remember that so that we can learn to stay safe and away from the narcissistic energy that steals our good energy and steals our, our emotional health. And we may never be able to communicate about the things we need to communicate about with that person. And then that just goes toward the conversation we have to have with ourselves about whether or not what we're dealing with is what we wish to be dealing with.